connect the dots. In a study done by Yoon, Audrey, and Zaghi, researchers looked at angioglossia, aka tongue tie, as a risk factor for developing a high palate. We know the high palate can be shaped, but just how is a question. They looked at different measurements in the mouth, including canine to canine arch length, the molar arch length, the intercanine width. They also looked at the intermolar dental heights and the distance between the margins of the molars, as well as the slope of the mouth. In order to determine the severity of the tongue tie, researchers used the Kotlow Free Tongue Tie Measurement Score as measured by the Quick Tongue Tie Assessment Tool, as well as a ratio determining the opening of the mouth tip to the incisive papilla. Results, tongue range of motion ratio and Kotlow measures of restricted tongue mobility were associated with one, ratio of maxillary intercanine width to canine arch length, two, ratio of maxillary intermolar width to canine arch length, and three, soft palate length. What does this mean for us? Well, the author's conclusions are that restricted tongue mobility was associated with narrowing of the maxillary arch and elongation of the soft palate in this study. These findings suggest that variations in tongue mobility may affect maxillofacial development. Findings from this article indicate there is a correlation between a tongue restriction due to the frenulum and the palatal vault height and shape. While this does not draw a conclusion, it does provide us evidence to move forward in additional studies on how restriction of the tongue affects the development of the hard and soft palate. Now, how does this all relate to ADHD? In a study by Anderson 2018, researchers looked at dental arch and palatal dimensions in children with ADHD. They looked at the relationship between ADHD and palatal vault height. Now, if you think back to the last study we looked at, we looked at tongue restriction and palatal vault height. Results from Anderson's study determined that ADHD children had a significantly narrow, high dental arch at the level of the canines. Well, what does this mean for us and what we know? We do know that narrow, high palatal arch can be caused by thumb sucking, extended pacifier use, sleep disordered breathing, genetically linked, birth anatomy of the face, but is it caused by tongue restriction? These two articles link together a very important topic. Does the frenulum restriction impact the vault height in the mouth resulting in ADHD? And if so, should it be our job to look at these palatal heights in young children to help intervene and correct it in order for them to not have ADHD?